So we had till now discussed about the different properties of air. What is its impact when it's heated, when it is cooled, and we've seen that uh, hot air expands, and because of expansion, density comes down. It becomes lighter, and when it uh, when you are cooling air, at that point, uh, it contracts and uh, its density increases and it becomes heavier. So, and we have looked at uh, the the hot air balloon and the Diwali lantern and all these kind of stuff uh, to see what exactly is the impact of heat on air and uh, how it influences the density. All right. Now, we also looked at some few other properties of uh, air and that is in terms of if it is it's moving very fast then it has an impact on the pressure and the pressure comes down with when you have air moving um, or the gas moving at a very high speed. So these are some of the things that we have looked at. Uh, we have also looked at what is atmospheric pressure, right? And we have seen that the air which is above the surface of uh, Earth, right? Even though air is light, it does have some weight. It is not that air is n air is not matter. Air is matter because air is a gas and it's a mixture of various gases come together like oxygen, carbon dioxide, maybe even things like nitrogen, uh, nitrous oxide, nitric oxide and sulfur dioxide. There are different gases, different different proportions which is there inside the air. And so air is matter and since air is matter it does have some weight. And since we're talking about atmospheric atmosphere around uh, uh, the planet which is which goes for a few kilometers that weight is in fact or the 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 force that that air which is above the surface is exerting is something which we have to always consider when we discuss about physics I also showed some experiments where I we had put some water um, in a glass and up to the brim and just put um, a, a sheet of cardboard about it and invert it and we saw that the water was not falling down and, and the and the reason which I, which I gave was the atmospheric pressure is what is helping to push the cardboard up and take the weight of the water inside the cup. A very interesting experiment which you can try out yourself. So there are uh, so we also looked at the notion of atmospheric pressure and uh, so basic which ba which means that the the atmosphere which is around the earth has some weight and it exerts uh, pressure onto um, you know what is there on the surface right now <coughs> in fact the pressure is equal in all directions and that is something that you learn later in in physics when you deal with uh, gases and their properties and pressure and, and all that stuff so we'll not get into that discussion I'm sure that we're going to dis get into that discussion probably in high school now I want to continue the session now we're going to talk about all these natural phenomena like the, the thunderstorms the hurricanes or cyclones and tornadoes how all these things occur and what are the reasons why this such such phenomena happens in nature and what actually is contributing uh, to nature for those things to happen and as a part of it first thing which I want to discuss about is thunderstorms now before stepping into uh, what it what causes thunderstorms I want to first show you an instance of a thunderstorm now so if you look at thunderstorm uh, it's very common in tropical areas uh, like the place where I'm in in India uh, we do get thunderstorms uh, quite a lot um, and as you know India is a peninsular area which is surrounded by ocean so we have quite a lot of expanse of land which is just n near the sea or oceans and so we do get thunderstorms quite often now what does thunderstorm have now that is what I want to show you in this video So you can see this is how the thunderstorm looks like. So you have very thick clouds with heavy rain with pretty gusty winds and lightning. And the lightning leads to the thunder. So I will explain how the thunder is, is created. Um, so this is what thunderstorm is. So a lot of thick clouds 
heavy rainfall, lightning, and followed by thunder. Now, these are all the, re the, the various characteristics, and in many, very often, there could be pretty swift winds, right? Uh, of course, in this video, what you see, the wind is not that much, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty little, but usually, if you look at the tropical thunderstorms, it will also be having pretty much very strong winds accompanying the rain. So, this is how the thunderstorm looks like, right? And the, the main characteristic is the lightning and the thunder right uh, so that's a that is mainly the the characteristic of a thunderstorm now i want to actually get into what causes this thunderstorms okay so what causes this thunderstorm so now let us let us just uh, explain and i for that i want to just take you to uh, a website which in fact has got some diagrams which helps to understand how the thunderstorms are created what is the genesis or the 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 reason for the thunderstorms to get created right and and all these forces in fact in nature starts small right it starts small but uh, in the course of time it becomes pretty massive right so even if you look at the thunderstorms that's what happens now what exactly is the reason why uh, the thunderstorms are there. So now that is what I want to explain first. And for that, I want to show a simple diagram, right, in terms of what happens when you have a scenario, right? So, so scenarios as follows. Um, you have warm, moist air. Sorry. Let me just uh, clear that. Okay, so the scenario is as follows so you have warm moist hair air which is near the surface so here this is earth surface right so this is earth surface so this is earth surface and near the earth surface you have warm moist air and this is something which typically happens um, you know even in the summer and uh, especially in tropical areas where you know generally the humidity of, of air is pretty high because it's it's near the uh, it's near the oceans right and uh, it's near the equator so it's warm and also it's moist right so you have uh, the air near the earth's surface warm and moist and then at the same time due to certain atmospheric conditions the high up right high up the atmosphere high up atmosphere so the same region high up the atmosphere there is cold dry air so you can see the extreme so here's warm moist and it's cold dry so you have a situation like this which can happen right due to various reasons right and when this happens that leads to unstable condition why there is unstable condition the reason why there is unstable condition is that the cold dry air and warm moist air now if you look at the warm moist air right uh, the <coughs> so what really happens is that the cold air so this is something we had discussed I even showed in experiments so, so if you look at the cold air cold air is always heavier right so the cold air is heavier and the warm air is is less denser or that means lighter that's something that you've seen right we've discussed that in the last session that if you have warm air or hot air hot air is lighter and the cold air is is heavier right the reason is the when you have warm air it expands and when it expands its density comes down and when that means it is less is lighter and that's something that we even seen that uh, bag with the heater experiment in the last session so the same thing happens here the only thing uh, the only difference is that the amount of air that you're talking about here is far more because you're talking about atmosphere and you're talking about huge volumes of air so now what is happening in this case is you have the the colder air which is up which is heavier it will definitely try to sink down 
right because it's heavy it's like if I have a stone and I leave it what happens it goes down why because of the gravity and and it is heavy it has got a mass and it's pretty dense so same thing happens here where you have the cold dry air which is up it's pretty heavy when compared to the the lighter air which is on near the surface of uh, earth so what happens is this air starts sinking so now you can see this this cold dry air starts sinking replacing the warm moist air and all this you should understand is huge volumes of air we're talking about and that leads to and this starts pushing it starts pushing uh, the warm moist air replacing it and the warm moist air starts going up now what really happens when the mo warm moist air starts going up now when the warm moist air starts going up definitely it starts cooling down because higher it goes the temperature of atmosphere higher it goes it, it starts becoming lower you might have seen that right now assume that you're you're driving driving to a high elevation area like you're you're probably going to Kulu Manali or uh, Darjeeling or in, in South India you have Uti and uh, Kodekral and and so on right now all these you feel cooler why why are you feeling cooler it's because you're going up right you're moving away uh, in the sense that you're climbing a hill or a mountain and there the rays of sunlight which is falling is slanting and um, so because of which it becomes cooler and cooler as you go up and when you, if you're talking about Himalayas you can see that you have snow clap snow cap mountains and that's because it's it's sub zero degree centigrade so here same thing happens right as the warm moist air starts going up it starts cooling and when it starts cooling what happens when it starts cooling the water vapor so it is water vapor it's moist that means that air is water vapor rich and so you have the water vapor rich air going up right so this is you should understand when say moist means it is rich in water vapor so it's rich in water vapor and it is going up and when it goes up what happens the rich the, the water vapor rich air the water vapor starts condensing why because the air is cooling and when it's cooling two things happens the air itself starts contracting because it's cooling right so it starts becoming denser and at the same time you also have the condensation of water vapor happening and that condensation when the water vapor condense I explained this I don't know if you've gone through my heat session then I've told that when you are what when the water vapor is condensing to water at that point what happens is that it is going to lose heat it is going to lose heat right whereas when the water gets converted to water vapor right at that time the water vapor the the water is absorbing heat and it and that heat is used to convert from water to water vapor but and the, just the opposite is what happens uh, sorry it is just the opposite which happens when the cooling happens right so here what is going to happen is the water vapor which is there inside the warm moist air as it starts going up the air starts cooling and when the air starts cooling the water vapor also starts cooling and the at the point what it's uh, what happens is that the water vapor gets converted to water the droplets of water and at the point when the conversion happens the latent heat of vaporization as it's called in physics is it starts uh, you know releasing heat at the point of condensation and that heat that energy that heat energy which is getting liberated again starts pushing this air faster up right uh, because the problem is when the heat is supplied to the air air again expands so uh, air was cooling then the condensation happens and the heat gets liberated and that heat is absorbed by the surrounding air it expands and when it expands there are certain reasons due to which the air starts moving faster right up so now what you're having is a circulation of air like this which have it's which which is pretty high speeds right and that is what leads to the storm right and the wind so now you have so 
so you can understand the the unstable condition which is being created when you have a situation where in a place you have warm moist air near the earth surface and above in the upper atmosphere you have cold dry air and and this leads to this moving around of air uh, and now what happens is that as it goes up when the latent heat of vaporization is liberated at that point again the air expands right and um, so it starts moving up at a higher speed and as it moves up again it cools down and you know whereas and 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 then this becomes like a cycle so it cools down and again it comes down and the warm air goes up and and it just starts happening now when this this cooling down and all that happens you should understand that you that leads to formation of thick clouds right so you're talking about so since the water vapor is cooling down a lot of water droplets will be uh, created and you will have a lot of uh, water droplets uh, small 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 water droplets and then they starts coming together right and that is where the precipitation happens the rain starts right so the main thing you should understand is the condition which leads to this right and that is when there is warm moist air near the earth surface and cold dry air in up above and that leads to uh, this whole movement i'm also going to take you to the steps so you don't worry about that but i just wanted to kind of uh, explain the physics behind why thunderstorms happen all right now uh, <coughs> excuse me i'm not keeping very well today but uh, so i my I'm, i would have heard my sound itself is not that good today but but i'm sure i can move along all right now now i'm going to show you the 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 exact cloud formation and how the thunderstorm starts right now and it has got different stages one is what's called the towering cumulus stage and that is the the beginning stage and that is what i explained where you have the warm moist air starts moving up cold air the dry air which is up is moving down right and that actually starts slowly and and this warm moist air when it starts going up starts cooling and when it starts cooling it starts forming thick clouds right uh, why because the cooling leads to the water vapor condensing and that water vapor condensing creates clouds with lot of water droplets inside and then uh, so that is the stage so that is the beginning stage of movement of air and that is what's called the towering cumulus stage where the warm moist air starts moving up and the cold dry air starts going down and that leads to uh, formation and this warm moist air when it starts going up it actually starts condensing and uh, the, the reach leading to water the water vapor condensing leading to water droplets forming leading to the cloud formation or it's called a cumulus right and uh, then this movement of air starts so you can see here the next stage the next stage is the maturing stage where more and more of these kind of thick thick clouds gets produced because more and more warm air is going so you can see the the movement here right so let me try to explain this movement so you can see that this is warm moist air going up right so this is warm warm moist air which is moving up right and as it moves up as it moves up what happens at this stage um as it moves up right here what is happening is the cooling of warm air happens right and that leads to condensation Condens condensation sorry condensation i i need to just erase this for a moment and that leads to condensation condensation of water vapor and that leads to condensation of water vapor forming water droplets and that leads to formation of these clouds right and it can also be possible some of this uh, water vapor uh, water droplets can also become ice right so now you have air with water droplets and and ice pieces inside moving very fast up right and the at the same time now so that is what is the condensation part and so here this going on and as it goes up here at this point the air is it starts becoming pretty cool right 
pretty cool. So it starts becoming pretty cool and then that same air starts moving down. Why? Because cooler air is heavier and so it starts moving down. So now you have something like this, right? There's something like this going on where there's a churn of air which is happening, right? So uh, that is what's happening. So condensation happens and here you, once it reaches here, it's cool air. So it again starts moving down. Again starts moving down. So this is the movement of air which is going on, right? Now, what really happens is that because of the condensation, the water droplets and ice, small ice pieces are created. And since air is moving very fast, these ice, ice pieces and water droplets starts rubbing each other. And when they start rubbing each other, that leads to what you call certain uh, type of electricity called static electricity and these movements are rubbing each other reads to a lot of formation of negative charge right so now you will find a lot of negative charge being created right now I know that you're not familiar with what is negative charge right um, if since you have not gone through uh, that portion of electricity but that's fine so what I can say is that uh, you know the, the just like I think I did explain this in uh, another session that we can uh, compare. Yeah, I did explain this in elements and compound session where I've explained about negative and positive charge, right? And uh, uh, what really happens is that um, the negative charge and the positive charge uh, uh, is, is if there is negative and a positive charge, they kind of attract each other, right? And uh, there are also uh, here when you have a heavily negatively charged cloud, what happens is that uh, the earth in fact behaves as a pos positive positive charged object right and there could be electric current which flows so there could be electric current which can flow right so this this electric current which is flowing that is what leads to lightning now if you ask me why that flow happens I think you need to learn a little more of electricity, right? And I'm sure they could learn that in probably 8th or ninth standard and then you'll understand. But what I want to tell you is because of this rubbing between the water droplets and the ice pieces uh, inside this cumulus or cumulus cloud, uh, because the air is moving pretty fast, right? There is upward draft because of the warm air going up and there's a downward draft or downward movement because of the cold air moving down and at this point the warm air and uh, so the, the air which is going up uh, is rubbing against the air which is going down and that rubbing uh, leads to this uh, negative charge being a lot of negative charge being produced and because of that uh, lightning happens now why how is thunder occurring so lightning is fine how is th thunder occurring the thunder is occurring because of this. Now let me just try to use a uh, board for that, right? So uh, let me have a new page. Oops, sorry. Uh, okay. So now, what? Uh, why is thunder happening? Now, what happens is that so here now you have the uh, negative charged cloud right and we have figured out why the negative charge because of rubbing of uh, uh, water droplets nice and here is the earth so this is earth earth surface now when there is human immense amount of negative charge being produced that leads to lightning so this is a lightning right I showed you in the video too so this is a lightning now what happens during the lightning is in fact it is striking from within it's striking from within the cloud and when the lightning strikes, now what happens is that, now assume that this is a cloud and inside the cloud you have the lightning going. And this, at the point when the lightning is nothing but flow of electric current. So this is flow of, flow of electric current, which is pretty high current, right? In fact, if you probably are able to somehow store that electric current being produced during one lightning, maybe I can uh, use that for, uh, you know, the amount of, I'm saying the amount of electricity being produced is so high, if I'm able to store that, I can use that, um, you know, to light a city completely. It's that much amount of current being produced. It's really huge, right? Now, 
this high current when it flows, what happens is that it heats up. It suddenly heats up, right? So let me use up uh, uh, another ink pen. So maybe here, yeah, right, right. So it heats up all this surrounding air. So this is a surrounding air. It heats up the surrounding air because uh, it's very high temperature. Right, so the lightning will have very high temperature, and because of that high temperature, it heats up the surrounding air. So, this is uh, the surrounding air. So, heats up surrounding air, and when the 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 when the air is surrounding heats up, what happens to it? It suddenly expands, and all this happens in fraction of a second don't think because lightning is not there for two hours right it just happens in a fraction of a second so lightning goes through the cloud and uh, the atmosphere and it strikes and at that point uh, the surrounding air is heated to, to you know hundreds of degree and suddenly it expands and when it expands that sudden expansion right so this leads to this leads to sudden expansion of air and that sudden expansion of air creates and this creates sound waves and that sound waves is what we hear uh, and that is what we hear as the thunder right that's that is what we hear as a thunder so what is really happening is that that sudden expansion of air because of the hot lightning which has passed through it that leads to formation of air uh, sound waves in air and that sound waves is what we hear as a uh, thunder okay so now there is a question why is thunder heard after lightning have you seen that lightning happens sometimes there may not be a thunder because that amount of sudden expansion is not that high and so there's no thunder but if it is really big time lightning then that is what is followed by thunder and why is the thunder following a lightning is because the velocity of light is far far higher than velocity of sound so the light reaches you the light of the lightning reaches you far more faster than the sound waves which follows it it is it it, it travels at a far more slower speed. So the sound waves is taking longer time to reach you, whereas light waves reaches you, a uh, light, um, yeah, now, light wave we can call, light particle, that, are, <laughs> that is what is called the dualism of light, and they, they could learn that later, right, uh, once you get into electromagnetic waves. Uh, so now, the thing is that, as, it re as the thunder is taking, uh, the sound has got a lower velocity or speed, the, it takes longer time to reach you and that is why always the thunder is uh, you know lightning is followed by a thunder it's not that the thunder and lightning happens together it really speaking it is happening together right but the sound is taking longer time to reach you and that is why uh, it is so some people think you know the thunder and the lightning is not are not related they are not they are very much related right and it's lightning which is causing the thunder and this is the reason for uh, this exactly is the reason why the thunder is, is is uh, produced during a lightning and why you're reaching that uh, hearing that far later than lightning has happened is because the sound wave take, uh, takes longer time to reach you because its velocity is lower right now so I hope that you kind of got an understanding of what is really going on now let us really see the steps right uh, I'll just clear this and go back yeah oops uh, let me just shift to cursor sorry all right now uh let me use probably a different color red is fine red is fine very much fine okay now so now let us really look at what are the steps in a thunderstorm. The so thunderstorm is caused by violent air currents inside the cumulus clouds. 
We have seen what's the cumulus clouds, right? That's the beginning stage. And what is that cumulus clouds? Cumulus means thunderous clouds. Now, which basically we are talking about the movement of warm, moist air upwards and cold, dry air downwards. Now, that is basically what leads to the air current, right? So the air current, the air current that you're talking about is is in fact produced because of that, right? So the air current, oops, sorry. So the air current is in fact produces produced because of the movement of uh, warm, moist air upwards and uh, cold, dry air downwards. So I think that is very clear. Right, and that's what I explained. And that condition is a must for a thunderstorm to be created. All right. Now, now what is really happening inside the cloud? Warm moisture is rising up rapidly, and as it rises up, uh, you know, it condenses. Right, it condenses, and while condensing, as I told you, it liberates heat or it releases heat. Right, and that releasing of heat. Uh, due, leads to formation of water droplets and ice particles, tiny ice particles within the uh, air, right? And then what is happening is that this heat liberated further expands, further expands the air and pushes it up with higher speeds. So now we can see there is very high speed air moving up, right? Now, uh, and why is that uh, high speed happening? Is because when it when the air is heated up, it expands, right? And that is why the high speed is happening. Now. Now we have very high velocity air moving up fast and you have high speed air moving, the cold air moving down. And now we have situations where the when this air is moving up like this, the water droplets and air and the, the ice particles inside starts rubbing each other. And that leads to uh, building up of the, the negative charge, which I explained. So you have a, a negatively charged cloud right negative charge cloud being created and that and then from the cloud uh, this is earth right the lightning strikes right now so that is what's going on so that builds a lot of negative charge uh, in the cloud and that negative charge leads to the lightning which is nothing but uh, electric current flowing from the cloud to the earth right so that's basically what's going on and now this causes lightning and I also explain what causes a thunder, right? Now, when the lightning uh, happens, it suddenly heats up the surrounding air to very high temperatures, and that leads to sudden expansion of air, creating air, air wa uh, sound waves, which is nothing but the thunder, right? So, uh, I'll just uh, probably write that down here because I don't have that here. So, so this leads to sudden, sudden expansion sudden heating sorry sudden uh, oops uh, sorry leads to sudden heating of surrounding air right sudden heating of surrounding air to very high temperature right and this this leads to leads to sudden expansion of surrounding air right sudden expansion of uh, surrounding air and and that sudden expansion of surrounding air uh, and sudden expansion why why is it expanding because it's getting heated a lot of heat is supplied and, and when the air is heated it expands so right so sudden expansion produces sound waves right and this causes 
thunder right and as i told you the reason why you're hearing thunder later than the lightning is because the light speed is far higher or far more than the speed of uh, sound and that's why you're hearing sound later right so this is this is what i want to tell so you can see the temperature of the lightning is third is it goes up to 30000 degrees celsius far more than probably the temperature uh, in the sun <laughs> right so that's that's the kind of temperature you're talking about 30000 degrees celsius very high and so you can understand how the how much of heat will be uh, supplied to the surrounding regions of air uh, around the thunder it will be quite a lot because the temperature is so high and so the the air is getting heated up to very high temperatures and suddenly it expands and uh, so the, you can you should think about the uh, the volume of heat which is being supplied right it's not 100 degree 200 degree celsius it's 30000 degree celsius which is huge right okay now the heat released by the uh, lightning makes air expand very very rapidly creating sound waves called thunder that's what i explained right now so usually uh, this is accompanied by storms and heavy rains heavy rains definitely right because you are getting cumulus clouds with lot of which is rich in moisture which is condensing lot of water droplets and small tiny ice particles this water droplets will start coalescing or coming together and that leads to precipitation or heavy rain right and storm definitely right because you have a turbulence which is being created where warm moisture is going up cold dry is coming down and that turbulence uh, in in the atmosphere leads to strong winds too right so i think you got an understanding of what is happening in a thunderstorm how it is created what is the reason why a thunderstorm is created how the air movement happens and what happens because of the air movement and how the lightning is created and how the thunder is created uh now let us let us now go ahead with uh, more discussion i hope you have written notes on this now uh let us go ahead okay now what are the precautions right now i want to also show you how a lightning strikes right so so you can see you can see the lightning striking here on a tree you can see that did you see that now there there was a lightning which is striking a tree right now what happens really is that when a lightning strikes it actually tries to find the the easiest way to flow into the earth so if you have a building right or if you have a tree which is above the surface or above the ground level right it will strike that right so that is why it is always better uh, not to uh, you know uh, hold a uh, iron steel pole and all that and stand somewhere when a lightning strikes because most probably it will strike that uh, uh, that steel pole which is above the the ground level and if you are catching it you will get a big time shock right so uh, there are different things there are things called lightning arresters or uh, which are used lightning arresters or lightning conductors as it, as they are called and you can see they get these gets installed on tall buildings and so on so that if the lightning strikes it strikes onto that uh, lightning arrester and uh, the lightning arrester is, con is connected to uh, a copper plate which is dug down deep in the earth uh, and it's connected to that and that all that electricity which gets just flows through it and goes down and so on so uh, there is a big story that i can talk about it but let us do that some other time when you learn electricity right so there are ways of taking care of lightning also so that it doesn't cause a lot of havoc now you could see here how the lightning struck onto the tree right okay so now what are some of the precautions that you can take so do not take shelter under a small tree or a high rise building right if you take a shelter it's good chance that the the lightning might strike the tree or the building and it can be dangerous for you right they are likely to strike that uh, those those kind of structures which is above the ground level cover your head with some cloth and be close to ground so maybe just lie down on the ground right that's a good idea do not sit near a, a, a open window why because it's possible that the lightning can strike and uh, you know you may be exposed to the lightning and do not stay under water why because it's possible that lightning may strike on the river or lake or somewhere and water is also it's only the pure water which is not a conductor of electricity if you look at the water which is in the lake or a 
or a river or a pond it's not pure water it has got dissolved salts and so it's it does conduct electricity and so if you are lying in water and it's possible that the current flows through the water and in and you it can strike you right so these are some of the precautions that you have to take care uh, 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 to you know be safe during a thunderstorm sorry now i want to talk about water hurricanes right and for that i want to first show how a hurricane looks like now i'm going to actually show you a video uh, which is from national geographic uh, which exactly explains how uh, the hurricanes uh, oops okay i think i should get that video now let me actually show you the hurricane hurricane this is actually a hurricane charlie and uh, you can see you can see how strong it is right it is so strong and it characters with this extremely high speed wind and it is mostly this high speed winds which produces all the damage right uh, i probably will take so you can see he's showing in the satellite uh, using the satellite picture uh, probably from one of the meteorological department is seeing how the hurricane the, the, or the cyclone is really building up and moving right uh, okay now you can see very strong and very very strong winds and heavy downpour followed and you can see that uh, you know this winds will start ripping off even the roof of that uh, petrol bunk right and that is you can see how it's ripping off the roof and how powerful the winds are so if in fact the hurricanes or cyclones or, or typhoons as it's called in different parts of, uh, of this planet its biggest damaging thing which it is uh, which uh, which exists in a hurricane is extremely strong winds and these strong winds can create havoc right this make uh, bring a lot of destruction it also can produce produce very high uh, very high waves uh, in the in, in seas, right? Which lashes on, and so the sea water also starts coming in because of those winds. And so it's the strong winds which actually causes a lot of damage during hurricane, right? Now, typically the hurricanes are always formed in oceans or seas, right? And then it slowly moves towards land. And when it moves towards land, once it reaches land, you can see that the hurricane it starts subsiding. Uh, and there's a reason for that because the hurricane need the hu hurricane is a self-generating kind of an engine. It 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 fuels it fuels itself. But what is required for a hurricane to exist is lot of warm moist air. And that warm moist air is abundantly available above the seas and oceans. But as it moves to land, since it, the fuel is a warm moist air and you don't get that uh, above the land, slowly hurricane subsides. Right, so that is typically how the hurricane works. But now, when it subsides, it may be immediately after uh, after it reaches the land, or it may be that it moves further into the land for a, a few hundred kilometers, and then it subsides. So it depends upon what what is the intensity of the hurricane, right? So we can't say that. Now, now I want to actually show you another video which quickly talks about what a hurricane is, right? So please listen to it and see it and uh, you kind of can understand. Violent winds, driving rain, killer waves. These are the hallmarks of a hurricane. You also can see how the hurricane looks from typhoons. top, from a satellite Hurricanes picture. Hurricanes are giant storms prowling the world's tropical seas. An average hurricane releases as much energy in a day as the explosion of half a million small atomic bombs. Hurricanes form in the summer and fall when the sun heats vast stretches of tropical ocean to over 82 degrees. Warm, moist air rises over these hot spots, creating thunderstorms. Upper level winds and surface winds then come together, forming a circular pattern of clouds known as a tropical depression. When the winds exceed 39 miles per hour, a tropical storm has developed. When the winds reach 74 miles per hour, a hurricane is officially born. Inside the storm, bands of rain up to 300 miles long meet in the eye wall, the most violent section. 
sphere, winds of up to 200 miles per hour spiral upward. Within the center of the hurricane, downdrafts of dry air create a strangely calm area called the eye. Fully formed, a hurricane may stretch over 500 miles in diameter. That's a storm nearly the size of Texas and reach a height of nine miles. Most of these storms spin out over the open sea, but in an average year, two or three will strike the mainland of North America. And when they do, the damage can be catastrophic. Most dangerous is the storm surge, a wall of water that sweeps across the coastline where a hurricane makes landfall. About 45,000 people were killed by hurricanes in the 20th century, including some 15,000 in the United States. Hurricanes are also costly in dollars. 1992's Hurricane Andrew was the most expensive natural disaster in U.S. history, causing more than $25 billion worth of damage. Scientists are searching for... So, uh, that's, that's what a hurricane is, right? So, the hurricane is typically produced from the seas and oceans in the tropics, which is near the equator, right? Now, uh, we can actually look at how, what really causes a hurricane, right? And that's what I want to discuss. What really causes a hurricane? So, in hurricane, wind blows to a speed of 300 kilometers per hour, right? It's it's very, very high speed. It is actually speed of probably a, um, a, a jet, jet propelled airplane. Right, it's it's a very very high speed, right? And typically, it develops eight eight, eight degree north and fifteen degree south. And typically, this is a tropical, this is a tropical belt or tropical area, right? And tropical area, and uh, it is always starts above seas and oceans so always hurricane starts from seas and oceans and there's a reason for that and that's what we'll see right and it is called by different names uh, in North America uh, it's, it's usually called as hurricanes uh, in India usually we call it as cyclones in some areas it's called typhoons right so all these things mean the same and the key aspect is the high speed wind and this is what caused all the have the high speed wind all right now uh, let's go ahead now I know there are a lot of points in this uh, I just wanted to capture the whole thing in one slide so that you get all the points there and it, it, it becomes far more easier for you to understand that so <coughs> I'm sorry now, the the key aspect of hurricane is that it fuels itself. That means if you if the car has to move, you have to keep on keep on uh, providing a petrol or diesel, isn't it not? So the car cannot run by itself unless you give the uh, the the fuel to it. But in the case of hurricane, it doesn't need any fuel. Fuel, right? Uh, it it provides a fuel itself. So it's like a uh, self-created and self-propelling kind of an engine right so that's how a hurricane can be named as so now how does it provide fuel to itself now that's what we'll see when we look at how the hurricane works the fuel of hurricane is nothing but warm moist moist air right warm water vapor right warm or we can say warm air which is rich in water vapor that is what is the fuel required that is what is required for a hurricane to exist right once it starts and it gets that abundantly above the seas and oceans right because typically the uh, the the air which is above the seas and oceans in the tropical areas like even india right it'll be warm and it'll be also moist because it is the air is just above the sea and so there will be a lot of water vaporizing into water vapor and so that air which is just above the sea will have lots and lots of water vapor so the that is the fuel required for a hurricane to be formed and a hurricane to exist 
Now what really happens is formation of hurricane. How does it get formed? Winds from opposite directions meet causing so the winds from opposite directions right so opposite direction meet causing upward spiral air so what is happening is that winds from opposite direction comes like that and uh, they kind of hit each other and that leads to a spiral movement of air right you may have seen that in the video too right so that leads to a spiral movement of air so the air is from um, is blowing in opposite directions and they come together and then there's a spiral movement of air upwards Right, and of course this movement is upwards. Right, so uh, the upward spiraling movement, which which happens. Right now, this causes warm water vapor from sea to rise upwards. So now we this spiral movement is the movement of warm, moist air moving up, right? And the water vapor rises and condenses to form clouds. Definitely, right? And that's something we have seen thunder thund thunderstorms also. So now what is happening is that the water vapor so there's a lot of water vapor inside this because it's warm moist air and as it moves up the air cools down and when the air cools down the water vapor condenses right and while condensing it forms clouds because what is cloud cloud is nothing but air with a lot of what uh, condensed water vapor that's what with a lot of tiny droplets of water so that's what cloud is right now water vapor rises and condenses to form clouds and heat energy is released as i told you when the water is con water vapor is condensing to water droplets always there's release of energy it releases what you call the latent heat of vaporization right and that provides lot more heat is again fuel for the turbulence right so the heat energy is released when the water vapor condenses right so that's that is something which is very key so heat energy is released when water vapor condenses right and this further warms up the surrounding air definitely right when the heat is liberated the surrounding air uh, warms and it rises up faster why because of air expands so it rises up what's faster so till there there are similarities between thunderstorm and <coughs> and hurricanes right now upward drop acts like a chimney so now what is happening is this upward movement of the spiral spiral movement of air it actually kind of Works as works as a uh, what do you call a chimney sucking in air. It's like it starts working like a vacuum pump. Have you seen a vacuum pump? What happens in vacuum pump? It sucks in air, right? Similar area. So this leads to this leads to what you call a depression, right? Uh, or a low uh, low pressure and uh, low pressure area, right? So this this movement leads to what you call uh, which creating a low pressure zone right low pressure zone and that low pressure zone uh, will lead to sucking in of more air right so now what is happening is that this spiral movement creates a lo lot of low pressure area and that kind of acts like a vacuum vacuum pump even vacuum pump that's what's doing it's creating a low pressure area in fact right so it starts sucking in more and more of uh, warm moist air right and when it sucks in that what will happen this that again the same condensation of water vapor more heat liberated and that leads to more faster uh, uh, rotating or uh, spiraling air and so it actually starts fueling itself and it becomes starts becoming bigger and bigger and bigger so more uh, uh, more time the hurricane exits it becomes far stronger and stronger and stronger because uh, because of this this spiral movement becomes faster and faster because more and more heat is being liberated because of condensation of air which fuels hurricane even more so that's why i told that hurricane knows to fuel itself and the reason why and the fueling of this hurricane is mainly by this upward spiraling chimney which is in the center of the hurricane and that is why the hurricane is uh, it's also almost like a spiral shape right because of this complete movement of uh, air right which happening and a lot of clouds being created because of condensation of uh, water vapor now so that is what what leads to the sucking in of air right from bottom and blowing it up right to the top so it is sucking in air and it is blown out oops sorry this moment and so here we have the sucking in of air which is happening here and blowing it out uh, up right so this is what is really the the heart of the hurricane right or it's called the eye of the storm as it's called right 
Now, air speeds up as uh, it spirals inward and in turn increases the speed of air going up the chimney. Right. So, as and when you, uh, uh, as and when the uh, air is going up, it uh, the the water vapor condenses, liberates heat, and that leads to further expansion of air, and that becomes makes the air to move faster, and it just goes on and on. Right. And this draws and because of the suction, suction action, it draws in more and more warm, moist air. So that is a fuel, right? And that again starts condensing, and 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 so on, and this process starts continuing. Right, and with release of more heat, hurricane spirals at higher speeds. Right, and the in the center of the hurricane, there is what you call the eye of the uh, hurricane. There is a small area where there is no much air movement. Right, it's a low pressure area, but there's no much uh, movement of air there. Right, but around that is all what the big time spiraling air at very high speeds happen. Right now, there are situ situations where the hurricanes may also have lightnings, lightnings inside. Right again, that is caused because of that the the same rubbing of uh, rubbing of uh, the water droplets, and that leads to the the charge, negative charge creation, and some some sometimes there could be small small lightnings also inside the hurricane. So you can see that this is what is going on. So ultimately, the fuel is the warm moist air, right? And then, as they move forward uh, up, and as they move together, that creates a spiral movement of air, and uh, that's fueled more and more because that spiral movement leads to sucking in of more and more of warm moist air, and more warm moist air leads to more heat being generated, and more heat being generated makes that uh, uh, spiral movement more faster, and more uh, more and more clouds form, more and more uh, stronger winds being created, and you can see uh, in the video which I showed you how powerful those winds are. Right, so it this is this is what is really going on when uh, uh, you know during the formation of a hurricane and then how it proceeds. Now, if the hurricane remains in sea for longer time, it becomes more and more powerful because it has sucked in more and more of warm moist air, right? But as soon as he moves into land masses, what happens is that there is no more the land cannot provide the warm moist air like the sea and oceans could provide, and that is where the hurricane starts slowly subsiding. Right, so that is really what is going on. I hope you understood what what I explained, and I, it could it, it, I could help you understand why how the hurricane is created. Right now, I want to actually talk about classification of hurricanes. Right, so the in fact the hurricanes are classified. Uh, hurricanes are classified uh, into different classifications and that is based on the speed of the hurricane right so now this is the speed right not one knot is equal to 1.15 miles per hour let me write it completely that's better So 1.15 miles per hour, right? So that is one knot, right? So when you're saying uh, 10 knots, it's somewhere around 11 miles per hour, right? So you can see that uh, this is a calm condition. There's hardly any wind. Then there's light breeze, which is four to six, uh, four to six, four maybe f uh, four to six knots, or we can say. It's 1.15, so it's approximately the same amount of miles. So you're talking about around 8 miles per hour is breeze, then gentle breeze is around 12, 11 to 12 miles per hour. Now you can see strong breeze. That is when it goes to around 20, uh, around 30 miles per hour, right? Then you have the gale winds, which is more powerful, right? Which is around 40 miles, 40, 45 miles per hour. Strong gale, and then the storm. Now here is where it starts, right? So the the this is where the hurricane is kind of starting. I can say that is when the storm starts, and then there is violent storms, and then there is a real hurricane. That is when the wind speeds go above 65 miles per hour, right? So you can see this is a classification. This is used by meteorological department. This is how they classify where a hurricane is formed, right? Now that's about it. So this is what is called the Beaufort wind scale, 
right and this is what is used by the meteorological department to state or classify the wind into storm or hurricane or a gale wind or whatever right so just wanted to show you this all right now now what is the impact of a hurricane right so here i want to just quickly show you uh, a video of uh, hurricane katrina which really make brought in lot of devastation in us right uh, i want to quickly show how it moved right and this So here I I want to show you this uh this video of Hurricane Katrina which uh, actually started off in August 24th and it actually starts uh you can see it started somewhere near Hawaii that is again pretty humid and warm area which is caused right and you can see how the cyclone is moving slowly right and so Wednesday uh Uh, so you can see that the effect of hurricanes uh, near some of the coastal area near florida right and uh, then how the hurricane starts building up you can see the strong winds which are caused because of the hurricane right and in fact it's really strong it can even pull out trees you see people are not able to even walk right and it's very heavy storms right and you can see this and, and and the trees can be pulled out at 26 it's becoming even more stronger you can see the that's what you can see the size of the uh, hurricane becoming bigger and bigger because more and more fuel fueling is happening and more it stays in the sea it becomes more and more powerful right <coughs> and see what people are doing they are trying to put saw uh, different things they are putting steel panels so that the windows are not smashed by the storm and all that and see how slowly and this is the eye of the storm or eye of the cyclone you can see it's a small calm area and see how it is moving towards the land right and uh the whole big high winds uh, which are produced and people are moving trying to move move out of the areas where based on the meteorological department they were told which are the affected areas and so they are moving out of those areas right and and you can see that this is how the city looks and see what happens once the cyclone hits it so now it is slowly moving to the landmass right so it can see that it's new orleans which is first struck right and you can see how the sea water is gushing into uh land because of the strong winds uh, the it it just pushed in right and uh, see how the sea water is flowing in so it's devastation right uh so uh, i just want to quickly show the movement of hurricane you can see slowly it's moving in as soon as it starts moving into the land it starts becoming less and less powerful because this, the the fueling of the hurricane doesn't happen anymore right uh so and you can see that how it's moving into the land uh and and the devastation it creates it's it's big time devastation in various areas okay so that's what i want to quickly show you it was a very 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 uh strong hurricane katrina and it did create a lot of damage uh, in different parts of united states right now <sighs> so going back to uh, what i was talking about so the impact of hurricane produces giant waves in sea with uh, with along along with torrential rains very heavy, heavy rains very high speed uh, winds which is at the order of more than 65 to 70 miles per hour which can even go to 150 200 miles per hour and there are different gradients for a hurricane in fact uh, and uh, then flooding of coastal areas huge sea waves devastation uh, caused because of torrential rains and very very high speed winds so this is what really happens uh, uh, and this is what's the impact of hurricanes now what about tornadoes now tornadoes are uh, are usually only seen in uh, in north america so uh, for example india it's very rarely we see tornadoes right now uh, i want to just quickly show you how a tornado looks like so here is a uh, instance of a tornado 
somewhere probably in Texas area and you can see that how it looks like so you can see how it looks like right so this is the this is actually a you can see a funnel shaped so this is funnel shaped right so you can see this is a funnel shaped in the uh, and it's a funnel shape and that is where all the action is happening so you can see uh, spiraling air here so the spiraling air right and uh, uh, it it touch it also has a this is what's called a touchdown area of the tornado where it it really touches the surface of earth and here there is a lot of suction So here it sucks in in air, right? So whatever it comes its way, it just sucks in. It's like a big, huge vacuum pump, right? Or a vacuum uh, vacuum vacuum cleaner, like what you see in hotels and and some of the houses, right? So it really is a it, it's like a vacuum cleaner, which actually just sucks in whatever it comes in way. So uh, it's very very it's pretty dangerous it is not as as bad as hurricane because it doesn't affect a large area right but where it comes it definitely creates a lot of havoc right and typically it happens in places like texas and all that north america uh so just go back okay sorry let me let, let us just continue seeing it for a little while let me just so you can see uh, how it looks like and, and above there is huge amount of thick clouds and uh, then you have a funnel shaped tornado and inside the tornado you can see that there will be huge amount of high speed winds spiraling spiraling and uh, it just kind of creates huge upward draught where the air is pushed up very at a high speed right <coughs> okay uh, so that is tornado right I just want to show you how the tornado looks like so let's go back so so tornadoes occur in cold countries like uh, USA funnel shaped clouds which reaches the, from sky to the ground that is what I, we saw in the video right neck of the funnel will suck whatever comes in its way neck of the tunnel is where the, it touches down the earth's surface there whatever is there in its way it sucks in and it goes up right and winds can circle around a speed of 300 kilometers per hour so the, the spiraling winds inside the tornado can go up to 300 kilometers per hour which is pretty high right so the area where the tornado is there there will be very 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 fast movement of air and winds lot of things sucked in and it creates havoc there right so these tornadoes can inv these tornadoes can even happen within hurricanes right so hurricanes itself inside can could have tornadoes right so that is basically what a tornado is uh, now what are the safety measures you can take now first is uh, important thing which uh, safe, safety measures is uh, east coastline so those areas where so the meteorological department meteorological departments is a department which all countries have which is responsible at looking at uh, climatic conditions what are the changes are there any storms coming are there rains coming are there gale winds or uh, tornadoes coming are there hurricanes coming so they're supposed to monitor now how do they do that one is they have actually put uh, you know different devices in different parts of uh, of our planets like seas oceans uh, different land masses mountains and all that to kind of and keep on they keep on monitoring what is the uh, air pressure what is the wind speeds there what is the temperatures there and based on that they kind of will be able to tell are there possibilities for hurricanes or rainfalls and all that the other th very very critical thing uh, which is part of this whole deal are satellites 
right? You might be remembering, uh, you would know that, uh, you know, India has got INSAT. INSAT is uh, uh, satellites which are moving around. It keeps on monitoring from high above uh, how the atmosphere is changing uh, and how is the wind movement uh, and uh, what uh, what is uh, what are the temperatures in the seas and oceans and what what are the wind, move, wind movements above the sea and above the planet uh, above the uh, 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 above Earth, especially India as a continent, uh, right? Uh, India as a country, and uh, so it keeps on monitoring all that and all this data, satellite data, uh, is useful for the meteorologists uh, who are the scientists working on the climate uh, and monitoring the climate to see or predict. Uh, whether there are rainfalls going to happen, strong winds going to happen. I don't know. Where, uh, I, I don't know whether you know there is a um, uh, a type a cyclone which hit Orissa, right? Uh, probably last month. And uh, the meteorological department of India did a wonderful job by predicting that a cyclone is coming and when it is going to come, what are the going to be the speeds and which are the coastal areas of India which is going to get affected. And then the Orissa government and the Andhra government did a wonderful job by uh, you know relocating all those uh, people who are living in the coastal areas to uh, higher up areas so that they are not affected. And in fact, we didn't have uh, many people dying, maybe three or four because of some accidents and so on. But other than that, uh, because of the prediction which the meteorologists uh, did and exactly could predict when the cyclone is going to hit uh, the coastal areas, they, they, they could actually inform the government and the government could to take uh, preventive measures so that we don't lose a lot of lives. And I would really want to congratulate Indian government and also the meteorological department for the wonderful job they did and they saved lakhs and lakhs of lives uh, by doing that. We actually, in fact, uh, moved almost six lakh people uh, from the coastal areas uh, to other uh, areas so that they were safe. So that was a wonderful job, and that could be done because the meteorologists could predict by using the satellite data and various other data that they get uh, in uh, on how the movement of uh, cycloners and how the wind movement will be, and so on. Now, uh, so the cyclone warning, this weather observation radars. So there are these weather observation radars. So that's why I'm saying this, the radar is another way of uh, monitoring the climatic conditions, right? And so there are weather monitoring radars which are installed in different parts of the world using which the meteorologist can collect data in terms of the cloud formation and the wind and what is the water vapor content and all that kind of stuff and start predicting whether any cyclone could be formed, a hurricane could be formed, uh, and uh, there could be could there be torrential rains and so on, right? If cyclone is moving towards the coast, then uh, the the meteorologist will be able to give a warning uh, at least 45 uh, 48 hours, that's two days before the cyclone hits the land, so that precautionary measures can be taken and people can be moved from those areas and the lives can be saved. Uh, so the the that's what I want to actually quickly show you. Uh, you know, the the Indian Meteorological Department's website. So this is the Indian Meteorological Department's uh, website, and you can see here uh, all the various predictions. So you can see monsoon. So it says how the monsoon was across the country, right? And uh, the the red areas are where enough rainfall was not there, but a large area got excess of rainfall. All the blue areas are excess of rainfall, and green areas normal rainfall. So I think uh, this time India got a very good monsoon, right? Now, uh, so this is uh, one map. This is cyclone uh, page, right? Where it, if there are cyclones, they give cyclone warnings. So if you look at uh, cyclone warning, oops, okay, sorry. I pressed the wrong. Uh, uh, so here you can see cyclone wind forecast. Right now it's a no cyclone, right? But uh, when you had looked at this page during the uh, Orissa Handra cyclone that we ha we had, uh, then uh, you 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 would have been seeing data. Uh, coming in terms of uh, where the cyclone is proceeding to, what are the wind speeds, and all that kind of stuff. So you can you should understand the meteorological department is doing a day and night job to continuously monitor the climatic conditions in and around the country and help the citizens to be safe. Even if such catastrophes happen, it's able to give uh, warnings far ahead so the government and the, the citizens can take precautionary measures. Right. So. Uh, 
All right. Now, let us uh, look at what are some of the precautions to be taken, right? So, when precautions on cyclone area, do not drink contaminated, uh, contaminated water, do not uh, touch electric poles because it could be that wires are broken and you can get a uh, uh, electric, uh, electric shock. Uh, actually, when the Odisha cyclone happened, actually the, the, the whole uh, the coastal areas, many towns and cities, the electricity department just switched off power supply, right? So that uh, the, all the accidents because of shorting and breaking of wires and all that can be avoided. So all this will be done, right? And follow the instruction of the district administration, the government offices, which kind of says what you need to do. So. That, so I think this session we looked at thunderstorms, how they are created. We looked at cyclone, how they uh, the cyclones are created or hurricanes are created, and how they move. We saw the effect. We saw some videos of the effect of thunderstorms, and we looked at how the lightning is created, how a thunder is created, right? We also looked at uh, the tornadoes. So that's about it. Uh, please post me more questions if you have, and we'll discuss that further. Thank you.